друзья, мы с вами снова встретились здесь, в, на Медичи ТВ. Мы продолжаем наши трансляции с конкурса Чайковского. Это вокальная, вокальная дисциплина, которую мы ведем вместе с, коллегом, с коллегой Джеймсом Джоли. Меня зовут Александр Мальч. Но вот прежде чем мы начнем наш сегодняшний разговор, с радостью, разговор о конкурсе Чайковского, с радостью представляем вам, вам Пинкса Цукермана, который оказался рядом с нами сегодня здесь, в Петербурге, в рамках фестиваля «Звезды белых ночей». Он дает два концерта сегодня вечером в Мариинском 2 и 28 числа, и вот именно поэтому мы получили эту удивительную возможность поговорить с ним перед началом нашей официальной трансляции, что не отменяет того, что вы делаете громче и внимательно нас слушаете. Hello and welcome back to St. Petersburg. We're on day three of the first round of the Tchaikovsky competition vocal uh, category. Now, standing next to me is a, a great musician. He's famous for a lot of things, but singing is probably not one of them. No, violinist, even in a shower. <laughs> violinist, violinist, <laughs> player and conductor, Pinka Zuckerman. Welcome. Nice to be here. So, so what, what brings you to uh, St. Petersburg? Huh, somebody called Valery Gergiev. <laughs> Собственно, Джеймс спрашивает, что привело вас в Петербург, на что, как вы понимаете, ответ был один, кто-то, кого зовут Валерий Гергиев. He said, you have to come. So I said, when? He said, now. <laughs> so I said, okay. And um, so I'm here. So you're doing two concerts? Uh, I'm doing two concerts. One tonight, I play with him the Beethoven Concerto, and then a few days later, I think it's 28th, I'm doing Brahms Symphony, Mozart Violin Concerto, and... Uh, Magic Flute Overtrick. Ну, вот, как вы понимаете, только что мужчины выяснили, что же будет исполнять Никита Цукерман здесь, в Петербурге. 28 июня «Волшебная флейта» и третий концерт для скрипки с оркестром Вольфа Мадея Моцарта и первая симфония Брамса. А сегодня вечером Бетховен — это концерт, мне кажется, концерт «Ре минор». Yeah, my wife and I, Amanda, we were here, <coughs> sorry, in Moscow in March okay. with the... Uh, Chamber Orchestra, Korean Chamber Orchestra. It was the 50th anniversary tour. And so I am a regular now in, in Russia. I've been coming a lot and I love it. We also went with Valeria on the train. All right. Oh, this is the, the, this is the festival, the, the traveling festival. Yeah, traveling festival with Murmansk and Kazan. So I've seen Russia really from the front, from the back, from the side. It's quite fantastic. Right so, so tonight you're playing the Beethoven Concerto. I mean, it must, you must have played that work hundreds and hundreds of times. I mean, Not today, though. Not today. <laughs> what, I mean, what makes it fresh every oh, time? It's, uh, the superlatives for this piece are non-existent in, in a dictionary. Uh, it's frightening, first of all. But secondly, it's also incredibly rewarding if it works well. If the instrument sounds good, the orchestra's good, uh, the hall, of course, the venue, All these elements come into play. It also depends how you feel that day. Um, and if it goes well, it is maybe the most satisfying violin concerto to play. It's so exposed. It is as elementary as it can get, with scales and arpeggios. But what phenomenal music. I mean, you just think of the slow movement. It goes from D major to G major. That's all it does. Again, what invention, though. So it's very, it's an extraordinary piece to have lived with now for at least 45, almost 50 years. Как вы понимаете, Джеймс, во-первых, задал вопрос, как когда же вы познакомились с Валерием Гергием, и выясняется, что Пинка Сукерман давным-давно знаком с Валерием Абисалчем, даже путешествовал в знаменитом поезде во время пасхального фестиваля по России. Но что касается сегодняшнего концерта, концерта, который будет исполнять, концерт Бетховена, который будет исполнять наш гость, как вам остается, как вы тысячу раз в жизни играли его, как вам удается сделать его таким же живым каждый раз, что вы в нем находите? Ну и как вы понимаете, ответ здесь, ответ здесь простой. Uh, он настолько насыщенный сам по себе, этот концерт, настолько насыщенная музыка, что ее uh, довольно легко исполнять, но и что в, в, ну, вместе с тем очень большая ответственность. Это пугает, такой, потому что каждый раз нужно к ней подходить особенно. Я думаю, вы помните, вчера один из конкурсантов uh, сказал, что страх на самом деле помогает ему на сцене. Давайте спросим у господина Цукермана, что помогает ему. Yesterday one of the competitors here on the Tchaikovsky contest, he was a singer, by the way, uh, said that the, the fear helps him uh, uh, going on stage. Fear? fear. Wow. Yeah, fear, because he, he scares a lot and fear helps him. What does, what, what, what helps you? Well, maybe he meant vulnerability. <laughs> no, no, he Or said maybe fear. adrenaline. <laughs> no, no, yeah, well, it was exactly. Fear? I yeah. don't know. I try not to, I try to help students get away from fear. Uh, I think adrenaline, I think you're right, mm -hmm. adrenaline is a mechanism that happens to all of us. But I'd say fear is a little bit far-fetched. <laughs> I, 
<laughs> vulnerability is okay if you can handle that. You know, Chilabadake said um, that if you don't know what you're doing, don't do it. Ответ прекрасный, мне кажется. Может быть, это все-таки волнение, может быть, это какое-то беспокойство, потому что страх — это то, чему я учу своих студентов. Не нужно бояться. Если вы что-то не можете сделать, вы просто не делаете это. Now, your, your second concert, you are playing a Mozart violin concerto, but you're also conducting Brahms I. Um, the Mariinsky Orchestra is an opera orchestra as much as it's a symphonic orchestra. Do you, I mean, do you notice a difference with an orchestra that is used to, as it were, following singers and working with singers? Is there oh, a it's wonderful. I think an orchestra should play some opera during a year, as they should play a Beethoven symphony. Uh, those two elements are maybe the two sides of a, of a two sides, west and east, but it's very important because they learn to anticipate uh, the singer, the stage, the production that's happening. So it's so much easier to actually play with an orchestra, a concerto, because they're anticipating already what you're going to be doing. Now, of course, again, you have to come prepared, you have to rehearse a certain way, but these are all aspects that become um, large chamber music, because it's the process of listening process it's all about. And yes, you can beat properly, you can beat badly. That's not good. <laughs> if you beat badly, that's not good. But if you beat properly, They'll play by themselves, you know, there's not that much one has to do. At rehearsal, yes. At rehearsal, you have to really know what you want and the sound you need. I bring my parts, of course. Uh, those are very important elements as a conductor to come in. I have conducted them before, so it's mm -hmm. not the first time. Um, I mean, how would you characterize them as an orchestra? Hard working. Mm, very hard working. Uh, very flexible. When we went on the tour, yeah. uh, they played Scriabin Second Symphony with one hour of rehearsal. I couldn't believe it. I said, how are they going to do this? Um, so they did. They did. They're somehow amazing. These people are extraordinary in their ability to put things together properly very quickly. Зашел разговор о том, как маэстро оценивает оркестр, оркестр Мэнинского театра, с которым ему нужно выступать будет сегодня, 28 числа. Я начну отвечать с конца, с того, что, конечно, это очень трудолюбивый, по-настоящему много работающий оркестр, который, например, играет Скрябина после одной часовой репетиции и делает это совершенно потрясающе, хотя впервые, когда они встретились с оркестром, это вызывало вопросы у Пинкса Цукермана. Джеймс спросил, чувствуете ли вы разницу между тем, что этот оркестр чаще играет оперу, что это оперный оркестр, а вы делаете с ними симфоническую музыку, на что э, мы, господин Цукерман отвечает, что на самом деле это очень хорошо, когда оркестр может это две грани, которые должен совмещать любой оркестр, и этот оркестр делает это замечательно. Ну, а что самое главное, э, важно хорошо дирижировать, если ты хорошо дирижируешь, то оркестр э, хорошо исполняет музыку. Now, you mentioned chamber music. I mean, chamber music is obviously something very important to you. To everybody. Um, Up to everyone, absolutely. <laughs> we've got um, we've been dipping into the Medici archives over the last few days, and we've got, we've got a clip of one of those amazing Christopher Newpen films, which which certainly formed part of my growing up because I just remember thinking, God, if that's what music is all about, I want in. Um, and this is this is um, this wonderful film where you performed the Trout Quintet with Itzhak Perlman, uh, Jacqueline Dupre, Zubin Mehta, Daniel Barenboim, and we've got a little clip of just before you go on stage. There's, you don't feature an enormous amount, but I mean. That just seemed like an extraordinary time and ensemble. Yes. I mean, you were, you were clearly all really good friends. Well, we were all either staying in London or living partially in London at the time. There was an incredible bond <coughs> between all of us. Uh, there were so many extraordinary people moving in and out of London at the time. They still are, of course, today. Uh, Chris had this idea of creating this particular film. That concert, However, had Pierrot Lunaire in wow. the second half with all of us playing. I played violin and viola mm -hmm. on in the Pierrot, and uh, and we had an extraordinary. Uh, Zubin was conducting, so he left the bass backstage and he came to conduct. <laughs> so it it was uh, an incredible day for all of us. The, the fact that it turned into this Trout Quintet as we know it, that's just pure. I think pure luck, and of course a little genius on Nupin's side. 
Yeah, мы прямо сейчас перескочим с вами на видео. Мы часто здесь смотрим видео из архивов Медич ТВ. И вот э, фрагмент из фильма, который был снят с замечательным режиссером, документалистом, который работает много работал с классической музыкой, Кристофером Ньюпеном. Э, наш гость Жаклин Дюпре, Зубин Метод и Баринбоем окажутся вместе вот сейчас в одном, э, в одном помещении. Это будет совершеннейший, конечно, бэкстейдж, то, что вы увидите. Э, но поверьте... Это то, на что стоит обратить внимание. И давайте посмотрим, а после вернемся к разговору. So, here it comes. The subtle problems of playing chamber music are still with them backstage at the Queen Elizabeth Hall, 15 minutes before the concert. Hey, Daddy, come on, let's play the Chopin Polonaise. What makes this summer festival unique is that it's mostly chamber music and mostly with young artists keen to work with one another. There's an unmistakable freshness of approach that's ideally suited to the new Elizabeth Hall on the south bank of the Thames. Both the programs and the artists have been chosen by Barenboim with these qualities in mind, and the spirit of the whole festival is epitomized by the trout, an event which could hardly happen anywhere else. Let's chord. make our Mendelssohn. Oh, God. Come on. We all have Ray, our. Just a minute. I play the bass. It's amazing. We have our. Theme. Yeah, he knows how to play the E. <laughs> <laughs> Just a minute. Come on. One, you play the accompaniment. One. Just a minute. Okay. <laughs> you know that there's a serious public waiting outside. <laughs> Come on, let's start. Part of uh, the Trout film um, that Christopher Newpin made, featuring a performance of the Trout Quintet, featuring uh, our guest Pinkus Zuckerman. You were telling us while 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 we were watching that of of just the extraordinary number of famous people who were sort of uh, circling around at the time. Well, Lawrence Foster was joining pages, and Orozco was there. I don't know who else was. I can't remember, but there must have been a bunch of musicians. Of course, we all went out to dinner. Of course, we used to eat a lot of Indian food at the time, and we would go to Gaylords on Morton oh, right, Street. Yeah. And for seven or eight quid, 70 people would be there. <laughs> it was a wonderful time. Пинка Цукин вспоминает эти эпизоды того, как снимался этот фильм, и говорит о том, что тогда вокруг было огромное количество прекрасных музыкантов. Кто-то просто переворачивал страницы, много ели индийской еды. У нас было около 70 человек, и все мы ходили... Is it an Indian restaurant in London? И все они ходили в индийский ресторан в Лондоне, который был неподалеку, и вместе там обедали. В общем, это было прекрасное время. Your, your work, your life, takes you around the world countless times a year to all sorts of countries. I mean, do you see music as one of the sort of the most elemental ways of bringing people together? Do you absolutely. see it as a force for peace? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Unfortunately, the politicians are not quite aware that we are there. <laughs> uh, in most countries, I think what's happening here is phenomenal. Um, I was here in 87. From 87 to today, it's, it's indescribable how extraordinary it is. I think we're seeing a shift now 
in geography to some extent. And the ge geographical essence of music lives a lot brighter somehow in the Far East. It's funny, actually, we've been noticing this because in the in the singing competition... Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, but I just need a pause to translate, sure, I'm sorry. Please do. Uh, James просил о том, чувствуете ли вы, что музыка — это такой настоящий uh, мост, мост мира, который энергия, энергия созидания, вы много путешествуете. И господин Цукерман отвечает, что да, действительно, это так. Я, к сожалению, только политики uh, не знают о том, что мы здесь есть, потому что им стоило бы к нам прислушаться. Да, действительно, сейчас музыка играет огромную роль в сближении, в сближении, в культурном сближении, хотя, конечно, географически э, происходит сдвиг от Европы, то, о чем мы вчера говорили много с теми, кто был здесь в нашей студии, э, сдвиг в сторону Востока, э, и этот центр, видимо, музыкальный тоже постепенно смещается. So does that mean that the musical center actually moves to, moves east? No, 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 it's not the center. There, there are pockets still where people want to be in Vienna, of course, and it should be in Vienna. They should be in Berlin, and then they should be in Paris, and they should be in London, they should be in New York. These are all arts-oriented cities, very large populations. Uh, we have picked up, the Orient has picked up the knowledge of history from Middle Europe and transformed it back now to Japan and China. The numbers alone in China, there must be two or three million pianists, for example. Yeah. And it's not Lang Lang, it's Rubinstein, you know, and it's Horowitz and Paderewski. They know all about that. Uh, so, yes, they emulate, of course, Lang Lang because he's from their generation. Uh, Yuja is a phenomenon. This is not some, something that grows in trees, you know. She was born with an extraordinary gift, but she was taught in America. So, has she learned now with her travel how to play better? Of course she has. Центр, на самом деле, конечно же, центр не смещается, просто и по-прежнему люди, которые приезжают с Востока, хотели бы оказаться и в Вене, и в Нью-Йорке, и в Париже, и в Лондоне, во всех тех местах, в городах, в которых очень сильно развито искусство. Но вместе с тем они получили знания, знания, которые, обучившись в, этих, в этой части света, они увезли, везут в сторону Азии, где, возможно, в Китае сейчас 2-3 миллиона пианистов, и они, они конечно, все пытаются копировать Ланг-Ланга, хотя Хотя при этом э, прекрасно знают э, Рубинштейна и думают и об этом тоже. И вот это важно, что происходит этот обмен. Now, you, with, with players coming from all over the world, I mean, you, you studied with Ivan Galamian. He went from, from Russia to, to Paris and then settled in New York where you... Well, I first studied with or, Feher in Israel. Right. She ran away from the Holocaust, or tried to, mm -hmm. and she came to Israel in 50, right after the revolution. Uh, she was already performing quite a bit in the 30s just before the war. And can one still talk about schools of violin playing Absolutely. today, or has it become... No, 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 we, I, I refer to it a lot. Okay. I refer to it a lot. What Galamian did, I think, is he took the violin, he created a language that helps us understand how to use the violin better, or to use the right hand, really. The right hand is where 85% of what we do belongs here. As a singer with a diaphragm, as the shoulders of the pianist, etc. So it's a, it's, a, it's a complete and absolute divide of the brain. We have two sides. He explained it in very simple terms, how to take the bow and create what he called the sounding point. Before he, before he started that uh, particular vocabulary, there was all kinds of, yes, you have to play beautifully, you have to use the bow, but he explained it. He explained it literally from the roots up, from the thumb to the fingers, to the arm, etc., etc., and it's an incredible method that has, as we know, what they say about Galamian, he taught a kitchen table how to play, and that was his genius. And, and patience, patience. And you oh. subscribe to this? You basically carry on the tradition. Absolutely. You, the only thing we do is talk too much. <laughs> he hardly talked. He just said no, and he would show us a little bit, and he said play. You understand? You understand? I said, of course I understand. <laughs> Мы говорим о школе Гламяна, которую, конечно же, Пинхас Сукерман передает дальше, как мы понимаем, и он рассказывает о том, что было, что был изобретен другой подход к обучению игре на скрипке, что в основном 80% is in the right hand. 85%. 85, 85 80%. I call it bank account. 
bank account. Yeah, because if it sounds better, yeah. you make more money. Yeah, of course. Okay. Uh, 85% Simple. of сосредоточено в правой руке, так же как у исполнителей в диафрагме, и вот это то, и все это посвящено изучению point of a sound, yes? Sounding point. Sound, yeah. Sounding point, точки звука, и, конечно, если сейчас это мастерство надо передавать дальше, и то, что, то как происходило это обучение, он просто немного показывал, говорит об этом Пинкас, и потом говорил, можешь так сыграть, можешь так сыграть, и вот я смог. Как я называю это? Это мой банковский счет. Чем лучше он звучит, тем больше денег у меня есть. Now, you know, you, you've, you've explained how you, you teach, but you also perform a lot with young musicians. I mean, I, I get the feeling sort of nowadays that a lot of musicians of your kind of generation just find it re really exciting and revitalizing to work with youngsters. Well, I think the history of that, I come from an incredible uh, aura and era in, in, in violin playing and music making. My uh, mentors were Casals and the Budapest Quartet. When I was 11, the Budapest Quartet played in Tel Aviv in four nights, all the Beethoven quartets. That was the only quartet at the time. Today, if you don't play as a quartet after 20 minutes, you don't play all the Beethoven quartets, you're not a quartet. <laughs> So the standards have changed somewhat. Mm. Uh, our expectations have changed. The purity and the understanding of music is a long journey. And that's where I think the, importance, the important aspect of something like the Tchaikovsky or the Belgian competition or any competition is taking those few and saying, come with me, I'm going to try and talk to you now. And I've talked to Valery about that to see if we can improve on the aspect already of the winners how do we develop their ability to go 50 60 years in this journey um, that's not easy uh, a lot of people unfortunately fall by the wayside not necessarily competitions but generally because it is hard it is hard to play to every night or every other night for many years you have to find your place your place so these are aspects that i constantly strive for with the kids I talk to them about everything, everything. But I can tell you, and I know you have to translate no, this. No, 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 it's okay. Um, when you take the method that we have been taught, it divides the brain. It's literally a garage. And the right side of the, the right side, meaning the right hand is the left side, that controls the sound, the effect, everything we do in music. That doesn't mean you shouldn't study harmony, of course, and you have to use your left hand properly, etc. But this is where it comes mm -hmm. from. And if you don't do that, and when they do that from the age, let's say, of 14, 15, 16, to about 20, they're better people. They think better. Boys, for example, who come in after two years, well-dressed, and usually I go, got a girlfriend. <laughs> 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 Lo and behold, that's what happens. It's amazing how it all gets cleaned up. <laughs> it's pretty good. Top tip. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I'll try to translate it briefly. Я пытаюсь коротко все это рассказать вам за те 40 секунд, которые у меня есть. Итак, вопрос от Джеймса был, как вам работать с молодыми, много ли, сильно ли все изменилось. И действительно, господин Цукерман говорит о том, что да, много изменилось. И то, на что, и мы об этом говорили с Валерием Гергием, нужно смотреть за тем, как им найти свое место в жизни. Потому что играть одно и то же каждый вечер очень тяжело. И для этого и нужны такие конкурсы, как конкурс Чеков, где вы можете взять лучших и повести их за собой, сказать им, ребята, я могу вас чему-то научить. Но каждый, конечно, должен найти свое место в жизни. И кроме этого, это же все, мозг, это как гараж, в котором, который разделен на две половины. Правая рука отвечает за левую часть мозга, а левая рука, соответственно, за правую. Все это нужно соединить, и все это должно быть очень чисто в твоей голове. Именно это позволяет в результате людям, которые учились, прийти в обратно через спустя 2-3 года после обучения. И господин Цукерман говорит, ну, он видит, что они лучше одеты, у них все в голове прояснилось, и он честно эксперимент. Спрашивает, ну как, девчонка-то нашлась, и да, говорят они, do they have a girlfriend? Sometimes. Иногда у них даже есть девчонка. Так что, в общем, все, все неплохо. Я, прежде чем мы, мы скажем до свидания, before we say goodbye to Pinka Tsukeman, я должен еще раз сказать, что сегодня вечером здесь, в Мариинском 2, Бетховен и вместе с симфонией Ре-мажор, вместе с оркестром Мариинского театра, и 28 числа также Пинка Сукерман в Петербурге. So, 
as Alexander was saying, before we say goodbye to you, um, we do, and you've got your two concerts here in the Mariinsky, um, we've got a little video to play from last year's Verbio Festival. I mean, maybe you could introduce it. It's a, it's a Vivaldi double concerto. Yes, it's Vivaldi double, and with the cellist is my wife and my partner. <laughs> and uh, it was a wonderful orchestra. Again, a lot of young people there. Some of them are actually my students. The principal <laughs> second is uh, Bulgarian. She studied with me. Uh, and a couple of others. And so it's, uh, it's nice to see the tradition continue. Great. Well, thanks very much for joining us. Here's Thank the Vivaldi you. from Verbier.